Coming up next, we check in with people left homeless after a sinkhole opened nine months ago. We still don't really know what's going to make most sense for us. Should we sell it? Should we rent it? An update on what they're doing now. Plus, fighting back against an increasing number of football ticket scams. And an amazing show of support from a community center after the death of a high school football player. The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Cameron Lobley. And I'm Olivia Dunn. Thanks for joining us for the Center County Report. Our top story, it's been nine months since a big sinkhole changed the lives of some state college families. I talked with two former residents about where they are now. And so then began the long seven month period of trying to figure out how much was the damage, who was gonna pay for it, what did, needed to be repaired, when could it be uncondemned. It's been nearly nine months to the day since residents at the Georgetown Townhomes and State College got an unwelcome Christmas gift. A sinkhole opened in their neighborhood rendering 18 homes unsafe to live in. It forced families to evacuate before Christmas dinner. Longtime resident Maria Trulio returned to her home on Amblewood Way to find a dangerous scene. You know, something that you don't, ex you know, you don't expect to come back from Christmas vacation feeling like, you know, we have maybe 10 minutes to run in because the house still might collapse into a hole. At the time, it wasn't clear how long residents would have to wait to move back in. According to Trulio, she wasn't cleared to move back until August. Trulio and her husband were able to move to another apartment, but some of her neighbors did not have that luxury. I know a lot of our neighbors were not in that situation. They do have young kids, they do have pets, um, and, you know, we're left in, uh, in an ambiguous state. Trulio and her husband still own their home, where they've spent upwards of twenty-five dollars to $26,000 out of pocket on repairs and still don't know if they'll ever return. I'm standing right on top of where this massive sinkhole opened up back in December. Now, it's covered up in gravel as if it never even happened. But for some, the effects of this disaster are still being felt. When we counted it up, it was about $6,000 between hotel, food, incidentals, um, emergency moving costs, moving truck, boxes, all those things that we were not expecting to have to spend. Kay Pina also lived here. She's still suffering the financial effects that came as a renter. Pina, like Trulio, agrees that her and her small family could not wait that long for new housing. Now, I am a graduate student. I was trying to finish graduating, and then I also have a toddler. And so those really played a role in us wanting to provide a safe place and a permanent place. State Representative Scott Conklin announced a $180,000 grant for townhome residents affected by the winter disaster. Well, COVID cases are on the rise in Center County with 17 new hospital admissions as of September 9th. Here are the latest numbers available. The 70% increase from the previous week led to Mount Nittany Health's new mask mandate for all employees, which is effective through the end of the month. Pennsylvania has had over 4,700 positive tests over a two-week period. Pennsylvania's AG has announced a settlement with a former state college landlord over allegations the company illegally charged student tenants fees attached to security deposits. Under the agreement with Legacy Realty, the company must shut down and pay more than $17,000 to customers who filed complaints as part of a lawsuit. The owner of a state college restaurant is pleading guilty to not paying over $500,000 in sales tax between 2017 and 2022. Little Szechuan owner Yin Nung faced 13 felony counts of theft and other charges. Nung was also accused of failing to pay more than $26,000 in income tax in 2019. He's scheduled to be sentenced next month. And Highway Pizza is closing its doors on its downtown State College location after 60 years in business. Dante's Restaurants and Nightlife representatives say the restaurant's closure comes after a, quote, abrupt and unforeseen change of plan. Employees at the downtown spot have been offered positions at their sister location on West College App. After a special election in Pittsburgh, Democrats once again now have a one-vote majority in the Pennsylvania House. Former congressional aide Lindsey Powell will fill the vacancy left by another Democrat's resignation. Powell is expected to be certified by early October. Governor Shapiro has announced that people will now be automatically registered to vote when they get a new driver's license or ID card, part of an effort to increase voter, voter turnout ahead of the presidential election. Although the DMV has offered an opt-in for voter registration since 1993, 
Now Pennsylvanians have to actively opt out of it. Game day ticket scams have been a rising trend at Penn State and on other campuses around the country. Reporter Courtney McGinley has more on the risk even with digital ticketing. Penn State football tickets are popular and expensive, but hot tickets also mean scammers are working on new ways to separate you from your money. They're using platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and GroupMe. One student says he was scammed trying to sell his season tickets as a part of the Penn State student football ticket GroupMe. She was ready to buy from uh, me the tickets, and just because there was a lot of scam going on, she asked me for uh, my details, like my Penn State ID. So I showed it to her saying that I'm a Penn State student and I have the tickets. After Rahud sent his credentials, his ID and Ticketmaster account were then swiped and a fake Nitrim Rahud account was born. Fans looking for tickets reached out to Rahud, including me, only to find out the account was fake. So when I first reached out to you, you about me purchasing the ticket from you. Were you confused at all or had someone else reached out to you saying that they also got a ticket from you? Everyone the same thing. The Penn State Police knows, the University Park Police knows. According to University Police, several students have been a victim to the student section ticket fraud and I too have fallen for the scam. But how are police combating this issue? University police tell us they've been investigating the reported scams using available technology to help ID the scammers involved in these incidents. If any individual is identified, criminal charges could be brought against them. Other Penn State organizations are also fighting back. Every year, students get screwed out of tickets. I mean, it happens a lot. Uh, what we try to do at Auburn State, we try to make a verifiable account, which goes in and verifies the email addresses. So students that actually go to Penn State are selling to Penn State students. So far, there have been no reported scams through the Onward State Ticket Exchange. If you're still looking for tickets, it's recommended to meet in person or even join a FaceTime call to confirm their identity. In University Park, I'm Courtney McGinley for the Center County Report. University police have received reports of more than 100 scam incidents since the start of the fall semester. Well, Penn State got some good news this week. It's risen in the U.S. News and World Report Best Colleges Ranking for 2024. Listen to this. Penn State is ranked 28th among national public universities and 60th overall among more than 400 U.S. universities. Penn State remains the top-ranked school in Pennsylvania in the new report. Temple University's interim president has died after collapsing at a memorial service this week. Joanne Epps was rushed to the hospital after collapsing during the event on Tuesday. A Temple administrator says he was unaware of Epps having any health issues. No one was more beloved at our university than Joanne was. She was a personal friend and mentor to so many of us, and she pushed each of us to be the best versions of ourselves that we possibly could be. Epps worked at the university for more than 40 years, rising from a job in the bookstore to the presidency. A tropical weather system is moving up the coast. Coming up, see how it'll affect our weather tomorrow. Also coming up, a national honor for a Center County school. And are you a student looking for lunch with some company? Well, there's an app for that. Learn more about the Penn State student behind it all. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? What? My. Oh. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. 
Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Discover new favorites from PBS and locally produced shows from your station. Get the PBS video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime, anywhere. We care about things that affect the lives of every American. We are there at the front line to get to the heart of what really matters in every issue. This country has not seen this in 80 years. This extraordinary moment in American history. You're making such a huge impact. Trust is at the heart of what we do. An elementary school and state college has won a national award from the U.S. Department of Education. Radio Park Elementary School is one of only 13 PA schools named as a National Blue Ribbon School. It's among the best performers on state assessments and national tests. This is the third time a state college area school has earned the award. They see each individual kid and they care about those kids and they want to see them be successful and that's how you close gaps. The principal and some teachers are heading down to Washington, D.C. in November to accept the award. The State College Borough Council has voted to approve applications to the Home Investment Partnership Program. The borough is hoping for over $630,000 in federal grants that will go to funding affordable housing projects. By 2025, they plan to build two apartments and a single-family home with the funds. Local nonprofit Center Helps is expanding its mental health services to the community. County commissioners are discussing a $30,000 increase in funding to the service, which will also go to its suicide hotline. A vote to approve this funding increase will be held next Tuesday. A Penn State sophomore has created an app to help students avoid eating by themselves in dining halls. Reporter Shannon Tanso talked with him to learn more. For many freshmen just starting college, one of their biggest fears is struggling to find new friends. Ryan Nair hopes to ease their worries with the creation of his app called Meet and Eat. It helps with first years and anyone who's new getting connected, making friends for the first time. During his first year, Nair noticed how dining halls were often empty and there were few people to sit with. That inspired him to take his original idea of giving students access to the dining hall menus and turn it into something bigger. It will help a lot of freshmen establish a a lot more friends and make like the over experience, the overall experience uh, better to like transition to. By the end of his freshman year, he won a competition at Penn State called Hack PSU, then went on to win the Swift Student Challenge where he was able to meet the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook. When I met Tim, he thought the app was something that was already being used in the university, like that's what he thought of it, so it was like just a huge motivation. Meet and Eat has features including dining hall menus, hub dining options, and the ability to meet other students. You get a view where you can have a yes or no, and it's only up to three people a day, so people aren't picky. After answering a series of questions in the app, students are matched and able to eat their meals together here in the dining hall. With Meet and Eat now on the App Store, it may quickly make dining hall dinners a lot more fun. In University Park, I'm Shannon Tanzo for the Center County Report. How cool is that? With the project in the works since January, Meet and Eat is officially available to students at Penn State, Barnard, and the University of Georgia. Now, you don't really think of Center County as rodeo country, but the first annual Happy Valley Rodeo may change that opinion. The event was held last weekend at the County Grange Fairgrounds in Center Hall. The rodeo featured bull riding, barrel racing, steer wrestling, and tie-down roping. It was hosted by Delta Theta Sigma of Penn State. Good afternoon, Center County Report. I'm student meteorologist Leah Zamarco, bringing you a wrapping up our splendid September week with potentially wetter weekend. Looking over at the live cam at Beaver Stadium, we can see these clouds moving in for the afternoon. Temperatures around 61 degrees and calm winds are persisting. Looking at these clouds, we can see on the radar and satellite our tropical system over on the Atlantic, bringing these clouds up and into the Pennsylvania region for the next couple of days. Temperatures throughout the Commonwealth are spread around the 60s to low 70s, keeping State College in the central 61 degree mark. Looking into our future cast for our whiteout weekend here in State College, we can see these clouds moving in throughout the afternoon by 4.45 p.m., 
plenty of cloud coverage, but temperatures also on the rise with those breaks of sunshine coming through. Going forward into Saturday morning, we can see the rain making its way into the southeastern region of Pennsylvania, bringing showers with us for the game on Saturday. By 6.15 p.m., mid tailgating time, right before kickoff, we have intermittent scattered showers, plenty of rain throughout the game. As we go into the second half and towards the end of the game, rain is persisting, making its way to the top of the state. That will be pushing through all the weekend through Sunday evening, where we'll finally head to the Northeast and stay up there for the remainder of the weekend. Now for our forecast for today, we'll have a partly sunny day, clouds and sun for your fall Friday, 69 degrees with winds from the east. Going into tonight, it's a cool fall evening with temperatures dropping to around 53 degrees, but that easterly wind is still bringing in our wet and windy whiteout with temperatures around 59 degrees at the highest. Putting this all in one big picture, we can see our Friday forecast, our seven day forecast bringing wet from the weekend into the early beginnings of the week, but then that sun comes back for the end and we'll have some moderate fall temperatures. So it might be a damper of a forecast for this weekend, but I'm still hoping for that whiteout win. Yeah, you know, I think even with all the rain, we're going to see a lot of energy from all the students at the whiteout and everyone in the crowd. And I don't know about you guys, I'm really excited to see that fall weather coming at the end of the week. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a bit disappointed about that whiteout weather, but, you know, you really can't win them all. So appreciate you. Thank you, Leah. And now we're going to toss it over to Destiny with sports. Thanks, guys. Coming up in sports, whiteout conditions are on the way to Beaver Stadium. We look ahead to tomorrow's big game. And a community comes together to remember a football player after his sudden death. This experience I'm going to carry with me the rest of my life. I'll always be so grateful for everything you did for me. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I'm Destiny Sanchez with sports. We start with high school football, where the Jersey Shore Bulldogs are trying to regroup after a tragedy. Reporter Carlos Garcia was there to see an amazing show of community support. On Friday nights, the Jersey Shore football team plays for the borough and the fans. But this week, they played for something much more. Max Engel, a senior player on the team, died Friday after a brain injury. With 11 seconds left in a game against Sellingsgrove, Engel suddenly collapsed. Trainers and EMTs worked on him for the next 10 minutes before rushing him to the hospital. His fight ended a week later, and the school postponed their next game. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. And, uh... 
we're just so thankful uh, to all the people that reached out to us in this difficult situation. Fans showed up in force for the rescheduled game, creating a sea of orange and black, all sporting Max's number four. Off the field, the number was in the stands, on stickers, and posters. On the field, his number was painted in both end zones, and even the four-yard line was painted orange. And get this, in the first quarter, the Bulldogs had four interceptions. The first one returned for a touchdown. That score by Peyton Samar happened just four days after losing his best friend and neighbor. Well, it was kind of a blessing, and I thanked Max over there on the four after because it felt like he threw it right to me. Put, right, put that ball right there in my hands. Coming into this game with emotions high, the Bulldogs started out hot and did it all for Max. With a 61 to 12 win, the Bulldogs honored Max's commanding play on the field, but it was his off-field character that made an impression on everyone. A line in his obituary said, Max was a ray of light for his family and valued togetherness and love. He was a loving son and brother, proud uncle and loyal friend. He cared about everybody. He wanted to be there for everybody. He was just an overall, one of the best people I've ever known. In Jersey Shore, I'm Carlos Garcia for the Center County Report. Great tribute to Max and unbeaten Jersey Shore takes on Mifflinburg tomorrow night. Beaver Stadium will be full of white under the lights tomorrow night for the annual whiteout game. Here's our preview. For their first road game of the season, Penn State defeated the Fighting Illini on Saturday in Champaign 30-13. Now, the Nittany Lions have another Big Ten opponent, the Iowa Hawkeyes, in the infamous whiteout game this Saturday. Iowa is 3-0 on the season and is coming off a dominant 41-10 win over Western Michigan. In Champaign, Penn State defeated Illinois 30-13 in Memorial Stadium. With both teams coming into Saturday with 3-0 records, it's ringing bells from their last meeting two seasons ago. Last time Penn State saw Iowa was in Iowa City back in 2021, where the Hawkeyes rallied back from a 14-point deficit, winning the game 23-20. The Nittany Lions got off to a quick start in the game, jumping out to a 17-3 lead in the first half. But the Iowa defense would hold Penn State to just three second-half points as the Hawkeyes came from behind for the victory. Penn State is getting ready to hold their 15th full stadium whiteout on Saturday in Beaver Stadium. The annual whiteout game has become one of the signature traditions in all of college football, with 110,000 screaming fans all dressed in white. You know, all of these nationally televised games, uh, but also obviously specifically the whiteout, it's, it's more than just athletics. It's, it's an opportunity to showcase the entire university as a whole. With a chance of rain on Saturday, Coach Franklin isn't worried about the potential of taking on the elements. You know, we've had we've had rain in the forecast, uh, you know, earlier this year. Uh, that's why, you know, whenever it rains, we take it as an opportunity, as long as there's not thunder or lightning, to practice in it. Um, you know, so I think that by doing that, I think your guys build confidence. Kickoff tomorrow night is just after 7.30 and you can listen to the game live on Penn State Com Radio with our broadcast team at Beaver Stadium. Now let's take a look at the top two matchups this week in high school football. The 2-1 and one State High Little Lions travel to take on Central Dolphin at 7 tonight. The Rams are 3-1 and one on the season. And the Cumberland Valley Eagles welcome the Harrisburg Cougars at 7 this evening. Cumberland Valley is 1-3 and three, while Harrisburg is 3-1. and one. Penn State men's soccer is on the road this weekend trying to win its third game in a row. The Lions took on Maryland this week for the annual Mac Brady match. Senior Peter Mangione scored the only goal of the night, securing a win over the Terrapins. Penn State also debuted their new throwback pink and black jerseys. Their next game is at UNC Greensboro tomorrow. Two Penn State lacrosse stars were selected for the National Lacrosse League this week. Jack Posey's name was called in the fourth round with the 64th pick by the Calgary Roughnecks. Chris Jordan was selected 14 picks later as the 78th pick in the fifth round, also by Calgary. Penn State's women's volleyball begins Big, T Big Ten play this week with a match against Rutgers. The Nittany Lions dominated all night, winning in a three-set sweep over the Scarlet Knights. Transfers Jess Merzik and Cameron Hanna combined for 18 kills in the victory. That's all for sports. Back to you guys at the Anchor Desk. Thank you so much, Destiny. You know, that game against Rutgers with the women's volleyball team, electric. Absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to see what they do up against Northwestern. Sounds like a lot of fun. I wish I was there. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Destiny. All right, coming up next, he would have had tons of people in State College lining up in downtown. We'll be back after the break.
They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Get the PBS Video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime, anywhere. We care about things that affect the lives of every American. We are there at the front line to get to the heart of what really matters in every issue. This country has not seen this in 80 years. This extraordinary moment in American history. You're making such a huge impact. Trust is at the heart of what we do. For the second straight year, a downtown State College restaurant is donating all profits from a full day to Penn State's THON fundraising campaign. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and customers turned out on Tuesday at El Jefe's Taqueria to grab some food, with profits going to THON, the 46-hour dance marathon raising money to fight childhood cancer. THON volunteer Randy Garcia says it was a big success. I could say there's about 900 people that came over to us and credited to their donation, credited to their org, so that's pretty cool. El Jefe has raised almost $32,000 for THON in just 20 hours from 2,400 customers. THON is set for February 16th to the 18th at the Bryce Jordan Center. Man, great event for a great cause. Really all right, that's going to do it all for today's newscast. We hope you'll join us Tuesday for our next local news update. But you can always follow us anytime for breaking news on our Center County Report Twitter, X, and you can see our stories on our Facebook page and our website. Have a good afternoon. gives us we are supposed to protect it it's a real drama and it's unfolding right in front of you this will show us so many things that we just haven't seen change is coming So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome. Excuse me, sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. If the door's locked, knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't stare, don't use bad language. Or talk with your mouth full, keep your elbows off the table. What table? Don't interrupt. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give your seat up to anybody who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you want to be treated. Got it? Got it. Good talk. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes.
But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain.